YouTube, we're back, and today our little Lego guy is going to toss a ball up in the air at 10 meters per second. And in this problem, we're going to solve for the maximum height the ball reaches above the ground, as well as the total time the ball is going to spend in the air. Now, I want you to actually understand what's going on in this problem. So we're going to start not by punching some numbers into some equations. Rather, we're going to graph the position, velocity, and acceleration of the ball as it moves through the air. Now, from the moment this ball is thrown until the moment it's caught, the ball is in free fall, even on the way up. Anytime an object is in free fall, it's going to be accelerating downward at 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, the ball is thrown up in the air at 10 meters per second, and then it comes back down. So on our graph, we'll see a diagonal line with a steady slope of negative 9.8 meters per second per second. The important thing to realize here is that even though the slope of the line is negative, when the velocity of the ball is positive, the ball is moving up. And when the velocity of the ball is negative, the ball is moving down. And this little point right here is going to be important in just a little while. Now moving on to our position versus time graph, we know the ball is going to go up and then come back down. And that graph is a parabola. The reason being at first, the ball is moving quickly upward. So it has a large positive slope, or you could say it has a large change in position for a given change in time. But as time goes on, that change in position is gonna get smaller and smaller every second until the ball reaches its highest point. Now it's pretty clear on the position versus time graph that this highest point is in fact the maximum height the ball reaches. But the trick in this entire problem is not looking at the position versus time graph, but looking at the velocity graph. And realize the maximum height which the ball reaches occurs when the velocity of the ball is zero. Now looking at the position versus time graph, we can see where both the maximum height as well as the total time which we're trying to solve for show up on the graph. Now it's important to recognize that two of the kinematic equations go with the position and velocity graphs, which we've already written out. Now, sometimes you'll see this position equation written with y's rather than x's to show it's in the y-axis, or other times you'll just see it written out as a displacement equation. But realize all three of these equations are showing us the same thing. So to solve for the total time, we're going to lay out our five kinematic variables. Now, because the ball starts and finishes at the same height, the total displacement is going to be zero. And that can be confusing. Realize it doesn't mean the ball doesn't go anywhere. It just means the ball starts and finishes at the same spot. Now the initial velocity is 10, and because the ball is in free fall the entire time, even on its way up, the acceleration is going to be negative 9.8. And we say it's negative because in this problem we're sticking with the convention that upward is positive, which means the acceleration due to gravity downward is negative. So now we can use the displacement equation to solve for the total time this ball is going to spend in the air. So plugging these values into the displacement equation, we can solve for the total time the ball spends in the air. And we find the ball is going to land 2.04 seconds after it's thrown upward. Next, moving on to the maximum height the ball reaches. We're again going to lay out the five kinematic variables. And kids, it's really important to recognize. I can't stress this enough. Because the ball reaches its maximum height at a different point in time than when it lands, we can't use the same five kinematic variables that we did when working out the total time portion of this problem. So the maximum height in this problem isn't zero, it's simply the displacement from where the ball is thrown until it reaches its, you know, maximum height. Now the initial velocity of the ball is still 10, and the acceleration is still negative 9.8. Now I want to caution you here. Some of you may recognize that this ball is going to reach its maximum height at half of the total time. And it's tempting to plug that value of 1.02 seconds in to the time for solving for the maximum height. But realize that time is half the total time only if the ball is caught at the same height from which it was thrown. And that's also assuming that this time is even correct. I mean, I just did the problem for you, it is. But if you're doing this on your own, maybe don't make that assumption. The key to this problem, and the reason we graphed all of the motion of this ball, is so that you can see that the velocity of the ball at its maximum height is zero. And given that piece of information, we now have enough kinematic variables in order to use a different kinematic equation that doesn't involve time to solve for the displacement or the maximum displacement of the ball above where it's thrown. So plug in our values into this kinematic equation. And we find the ball moves upward a maximum displacement of 5.10 meters. 
So this has been how to graph the motion of a ball that's thrown up in the air, as well as how to solve for the total time and maximum height the ball reaches. I hope you found this useful, and on that note, that's all for now.